Well, good morning and welcome to the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And of course, this is brought to you as usual by DTC. And they've even been gracious enough to uh, let us do this show in their studio, which is great. I didn't know they had a studio. I've been here before, but it wasn't a studio then. But we do appreciate all that they do for the chamber. And um, I do have some guests today. And I do, my name is Carolyn Motley, and I am the coordinator for the Chamber of Commerce. And I also have uh, a co-host, which you'll see a little later, uh, Keith Reddy, and he is with the Cannon Courier, plus he is the vice president of our chamber. And I have a guest with me right now, Deborah Leach, and she is the treasurer of the chamber, but she is also the director of the uh, Senior Citizen Center here in Woodbury, which we're very proud of. Uh, you know, um, the purpose of, of this show is to highlight uh, events and focus on businesses in Cannon County and also the events that we're trying to have and also um, our organizations in Cannon County that, that make our community well worth living in. All of those put together right now is a very difficult time. It's a very difficult time to plan events or even have events, even though we have had a couple. But um, you'll have to bear with us. Right now, people don't, uh, event planners and everything really don't know what to do. But we'll, we'll get through it. We just don't have as many events for sure right now. But Deborah, the Senior Center has been closed for how long? Since March the 18th. That was our, uh, we, we met on March 17th, and the 18th we were closed. And you've been closed other than you've been there every day. Right. We've been closed to the public. Uh, right. Staff have been working. Uh, now we have obviously limited staff. Um, mm -hmm. We have temporarily laid off three part-time employees. Um, due to the fact that we're not open and due to the fact that um, some of our fundraising um, like you were saying, events have been limited. Right. So, um, but we are open, the staff is there, so if anyone does have a need. And you do still have food yes. uh, that goes out, not not where you can come in and eat, but you no. do have food that goes out to the home. Because we are a nutrition site and we do have a congregate meals program, um, that program we wanted to continue for those who had the need and particularly for those who were accustomed to coming every day mm -hmm. and having a congregate meal. Um, so currently we have 17 people um, who are a part of this program. Some pick theirs up at the senior center and some we deliver to their home, but it is a frozen meal. It's not a heated meal and it is for the week. Um, so we do one delivery per week. Right. Um, so for those who who do have that need, we're still able to. Now make you that have need. multiple meals for that week. It's not just five. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> because we served Monday through I Friday. Don't, yeah, I don't so want we people to think you just had one meal uh -huh. that's going to last all week. Uh, no, it probably probably wouldn't work that way. No, I don't. Um, think so. And then we also make telephone calls um, to check on some of our members, mm -hmm. um, and of course we are there for them to call us as well. Um, and so there's still programs and services that are provided. It just is a little bit different than what we're accustomed to. And then you haven't been renting out your room, no, your community room. Um, our board of directors made the decision since um, the governor's order has been, and, and we are under uh, a governor's executive order to remain closed as a senior center. Mm -hmm. It is not our decision, but it is um, statewide for all senior centers. Uh, to remain closed. Mm -hmm. um, so because we're under the governor's order, uh, our board of directors felt like that while we were to remain closed, that it was best um, for us not to rent out our building or any of our space. Well, I understand um, that. Yeah, and we want to assure public safety. And um, 
And of course there's a lot of restrictions um, as far as the governor is, is concerned as far as, um, and the CDC, Tennessee Pledge, um, to maintain a clean facility so that the, the spread of germs. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't assure that, that if we were renting our building because it would be, when we usually rent, it's a large number of people that would be in the building. And that's a large, one that's time. a large meeting room. Yes. So cleaning it and disinfecting it after every after every um, event or every group yeah. that was in there, I can yeah. understand that. And we I could did. not assure as a facility or as an organization that somebody would not uh, contract um, COVID while they were in our facility. I mean, yeah. So. Um, well, I don't think anyone can guarantee that. No. I don't. No. So for right <coughs> now, um, while we remain closed, we are not renting um, our space. So. Now you had a one big event, and this is probably one of your big fundraisers mm -hmm. for the year, and which usually was held in May. Yes. Which was postponed until August 28th and 29th. Correct. But then the governor sent out new guidelines mm -hmm. um, to okay. begin in that everything would be shut down until the 29th of August. Yes. So that has affected um, the good us, old days. The good old days, yes. And uh, to give you an update on that, our, our board of directors um, met last night for their quarterly uh, board meeting. Um, and so we did make a, a final decision about good old days because of this most recent executive order um, to postpone good old days um, until 2021. You know, I really think um, I really think that's smart, even though it's going to hurt your funding. I know it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we can just keep moving them up, and we're going to be into December. Well, and I really don't think there's going to be able to comfortably mm -hmm. have a lot of big events like that. Well, the governor's <coughs> order did um, say, you know, 50 or more. or more, if you, you have not, that many vendors, if for you the good old properly days. social distance, and in around the courthouse is a limited area. I yes, mean, it, it is. It is fairly limited as far as um, attendance and people um, gathering, and so um, it would be very difficult. And, and it would look different. It wouldn't be the same good old days. It wouldn't be the same event. There would be a lot of restrictions because I did do a lot of research and did write some policies and procedures for what we would do if we well, decided you have to host it. Yes, and from so, babies on up. So it, it would be very different. Um, but um, the decision was made to to really focus in on 2021. And as you said, we start planning good old days in January. Right. Uh, and and so to thing. postpone it even further this year, we would be running into the very next one. Right. Um, so we've decided, um, I mean, it was a difficult decision to make because it is. it is a large fundraiser for the Senior Center, but also it's a, a community event. It's a tradition. Um, and we all look forward to it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's people a, do. Yeah, it's a fun event. But we have decided, as far as a fundraiser, um, to focus in and do a live online auction, so a virtual fundraiser um, that would be exciting and fun and a way to interact, but still keep our community safe um, and be very uh, conscious well, of our health. I love the auctions. So, so this will be a live <laughs> online one, but uh, our board is working on it now, and it will be in August, uh, August 17th, okay. which will be pretty soon. Um, and it'll be in the evening. And so we'll have a lot more on our website at Cannon County um, Senior Center .com, uh, forthcoming about it. But we're excited about it. It'll be something new, something different. Right. Um, and our board is excited about it. So. Um, things change sometimes. And they do. And you know, this is one of these things, what we're going through right now. I don't know, because no one knows, but I don't know that it will ever go back to the normal we knew. Yeah. I think even going forward, this isn't going to just 
poof and it's gone. <laughs> it's not. No, it'll be something it's gonna be around. we'll have to be aware of and we'll have to be uh, take precautions. Um, even when we reopen as a senior center, right. um, the Tennessee Commission on Aging has already come out with guidelines for us to follow. And so we won't be able to just jump right in and be the active senior center that we were in the past right away. Right, um, you'll have to agree. There well, you know, like in December, one of my favorite is the Christmas gala, mm -hmm. and that may be um, on the line also yes. because we just, you just have a hard time planning anything. Well, we, we do, and we have talked about that um, at our board meetings as well. Um, of course, this executive uh, governor's order is through the 29th. We, mm -hmm. we know there will be another one after this one, and so we're kind of waiting to see what, what that will look like. Um, but yeah, we have more than 50 people at our gala. I mean, we oh, have yeah. over 100. We sell out every year, which we're very fortunate. We appreciate the support. It's a great event. Um, but well, yeah. you have eight at a table. Yes. You have the servers. And we're eating. Yes. That is one of the... Um, No-nos. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one thing we do know when we reopen as a senior center, we will not have congregate meals at the center. So yeah. we will not be eating. Um, so, I mean, at a fundraiser, I, I don't know that we would be able to be eating. Oh, and you'll have to do away <laughs> with the banana splits that are done in the gutters. <laughs> what well, <have> you got? <laughs> unless things change. <laughs> um, I always and, think that's neat. <laughs> yeah, we always do that in, uh, usually in July, uh, July or August, we have our uh, mile long, we call it mile long. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is long. Banana split party. So, yeah, a lot of things are going to be different. Yeah. Um, but we, we do look forward to the time when we can come together again and meet again and be at the same. Hey, I'm sure that yeah. the people that went there every day, they miss that terribly. Yeah. I'm sure they do. We have a lot of calls about when, you know, when we can uh, reopen. I like the one that you had while I was there where the lady wanted to know if you were dancing yet. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, music nights twice a month, another fundraiser that we have had for the last several years. Right. Um, we get a lot of calls when you're going to start music again. And it's not just uh, the music. People want to dance while they they're do. there. And so to... Uh, it's good exercise. Even if Come we on. could have the music... Um, you think, couldn't have the dance. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, bec again, because we are a senior center and um, we have uh, to remain closed, mm -hmm. we're not having our music night. But I know there are some venues that have opened that aren't senior centers that are having live music now. They have um, a lot of them have karaoke. Mm -hmm. People really like that. Yeah. No. I can't sing, so that wouldn't be a thing <laughs> for me. But a lot of people do like that. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you don't have that at the senior center. Karaoke? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say there'd be a bunch of them there. Yeah, well, there might be. That would be willing to get up there and sing or try. Of course, singing <laughs> is one of the things where, you know, you're projecting. Oh, yeah, you can't do so it now. No, you can't do no. singing. Um, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> can't I mean there's not much you can have that you aren't going to be right in each other's face mm -hmm. to some degree yeah we had our cruise in uh, the first one um, last week and I was really proud of the people we had 44 vehicles that showed up of course at a cruise in they come and go but even the people that get out, got out of their vehicles, they either sat behind their vehicles or they sat in the uh, courthouse yard. But I don't believe I've seen any of them gang up. They all kind of mm -hmm. they were on their own. Distancing. We didn't tell them that. Okay. I guess we would have had to. But they did a really good job mm -hmm. of doing that on their own. Now the car show, that the chamber has, which is their biggest fundraiser mm -hmm. in September. That's a different story. And <clears throat> I 
you <clears throat> you're on my board, so yes, that may be one of the things that we will we will have to change for this year. Right, we may have to come up with something a little different because there are a lot of people that attend the car show. Oh, I mean, there that's are a very well but attended. But you know the way the courthouse is. If I space them out six feet apart, the car, sh especially for the car show, because it's an all-day event. Yeah. If you space them out, you're only going to be able to have half of what there's the room for. Yes. Which really, we don't charge that much to get in. That would really hurt our bottom line. Yeah. And then getting sponsors for things this year. Yes. You know, people. They, some of them have been closed for Oh, right, and, months, and don't you know? have the extra funding in That's order right. to be able to sponsor. Oh, that's true. So, you know, a lot of things <laughs> are um, being held virtually. I know, um, for example, uh, Red Apple Days, um, they p postponed or canceled that event, but they're doing some virtual things, and they're doing a virtual race. So we might have to consider a virtual car show. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that would go, but <laughs> might just have to do something a little different. Right. I don't know how many would would sponsor something like that, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. But fundraisers are are important. They're viable for um, organizations. Many of the organizations so, depend on that. Yeah. Many of them do. So we have to come up with something different and creative. Yeah. I Which think is my not always easy. <laughs> I think my creativity is slowly drying up. I'm not sure, but we can see in that anyway. One thing we are doing at the Senior Center, um, just to let people know that may be watching, um, we have um, Walk with Ease, which is an evidence-based exercise program, which our exercise instructor, Sue Springer, is um, doing at Dillon Park. Mm -mm. And so exercise is a big part of the Senior Center. And it is. Because we are closed. Um, <clears throat> still doesn't mean the exercise is not equally important. So uh, there's a group right now of about 12 people, um, and she welcomes more to join, um, that she's leading a walking club. So just wanted to make people aware of that, that there are still ways to, to do things. It just has to be a little different. Oh, I, I could see the walking Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I could see you could space them unless you yes. had one that was a real fast walker. That yes, <laughs> so you can social distance and still walk. Right. And, and then there's some instruction and education along with that program that she's provided as well. So. Now, I noticed on your trips, a lot of them you have moved on down, some into 2021. Yes, we um, had to because um, it wasn't just us, but the travel was just put on hold and right. it was halted and of course a lot of travel companies have really suffered um, but for our cruises um, they have been um, new dates have been assigned and they are 2021 um, the only one that we have in 2020 is um, the Texas Fixer Upper Tour it was scheduled in March just right before everything shut down we were two weeks away from actually leaving for that trip and so it has been rescheduled to October, and we still do have openings if someone wants to join that tour. Um, and as far as I know, at this moment, uh, we are still going. Uh, there's 29 people booked on that tour. Okay. Um, but then um, the other ones are 2021. But right. I've had, had calls and interest because people are ready to travel. They're ready to get out. So. You know they are, but people have to realize <clears throat> that you're under guidelines, we all are. Yes. That have, mm -hmm. you know, we may want to have everything, mm -hmm. but you're under certain guidelines. Yes. And it is for their own good, whether they believe that or not, it is. Right, right. And You know, you don't want a busload full of senior citizens. Yes. <laughs> and all of them get sick. Oh, yeah, no. We, we had definitely have to have a lot of precautions in place. And... Um, of course, it's not just senior centers that 
that no. go on our trips. We have um, Younger it's ones open and, to yeah. everyone, so we we do have um, all ages that go. So, oh, definitely precautions will be in place. I think those are good. I've always have you go in a group. You know, you're safer. You let them do the planning, and you just go. Mm. <laughs> Yes, and, and we do stop every two, two and a half hours, so it's not like we're on that bus continually, and we stop for overnight, and so, um, it, yeah, it's not like it's just... Constant on that. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Well, Deborah, is there anything else you want us to know? I think we've we've covered a lot. Um, if anybody has any questions, though, um, certainly about uh, good old days, um, being postponed or our silent, uh, well, it's not really silent, it'll be virtual. Our virtual auction or anything about the Senior Center, we do have a Facebook page, um, we have a website, well, we have a Good Old Days me website. The information, I'll put it on the county website. Too. Okay, and we'll, we'll keep every, everyone updated and always call the Senior Center. Like I said, we are there um, Monday through Friday, staff is there um, 8 to 4. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Well, Keith, you're joining me now, and of course, you're the co-host of this show, and you work for the Courier, so I'm sure what I don't know, you probably do. I don't know. You know quite a bit. <laughs> you send me quite a bit of information. Well, I do, because uh, I want to keep up on things for the Chamber, especially uh, what the Governor sends out. Right. As information, you know, it was in July, now it's August. And you more or less, I mean, you can go against what his wishes are. But he's telling you that this is bad. Yeah. And you're going to have to pay attention to it. And I think that's true. Even though we had a cruise in, I haven't heard of anybody getting sick. And several of them did wear masks. Now the horse show that the Lions Club had on Saturday night, um, I don't know. I didn't see people wear masks. I was there. Did you see any of the horses wearing masks? No, no horses wearing masks. <laughs> you should have seen the walking horse competition. That was pretty cute. They had these kids oh, got yeah. out of their little stick horse. Stick horse stick is what horses. I'm talking about, yeah. I we had one. That. They had one kid that was kind of at the lead, and what he would do is he'd gallop along with the horse, like he was the horse. <laughs> That's what he did, and everybody started laughing and stuff. It was it was pretty cool. They had a good horse show, got a lot of good attendance. Yeah, uh, I this knew past they Saturday. Would. I didn't and, uh, work in it this year, mainly because. I mean, that's out there, and if you have underlying conditions, and I have some people in my family that are going through things right now, and they don't need to be exposed to it. Right. And I don't know that anyone was, but there's always that possibility. They had so. over 200 participants in this particular right. show. They always have a big horse yeah. show. Yeah. And of course, this year, the horse shows around them in Shelbyville. You know they're wanting to put on their show, so they're yeah. they're putting pressure on these smaller horse shows that have it. Bobby Sands, who was the ring announcer, actually had had, had a tour going on. Yeah. So yeah, Silverville had uh, been a couple nights prior. One particular horse show had been a couple nights prior to Canning Counties and yeah. Woodbury's. And then of course we had the fireworks show as well. We took a break at nine o'clock for the fireworks show. Thought well, we might be right. able to see them from the fairgrounds, but that wasn't the case. No, but, I, uh, I heard reports. I didn't go to that either. Uh, but my son went, and he said that um, they stayed in the car up by on the courthouse square, but they said they had a difficult time seeing it. Yeah, yeah, it was hard to see over the treetops. We jumped in the car and left the horse show and went up town, uptown, and over there by the Church of Christ, you could see it pretty good. Yeah. But a lot of it was the, you know, it's not the professional fireworks. It was the, just the uh, amateur type fireworks, the best he could find, best uh, the Moortown well, Baltimore Moore Fire Department. Fire Department but it on. Michael George is getting his pyro license, mm -hmm. and he would have actually had it in March of this year, except COVID hit, so he wasn't able to get it. But he's going to get his pyro license. He should have it in place for next year, and it'll be, it'll make a big Listen, significant difference. Listen, I want to tell you. Everybody was doing a lot of them at home. Yes, yes. Because 
all around me. And our dog, we had, he's an outside dog except for when they have fireworks and then he's an inside dog. He wouldn't have it any other way. Um, but the distillery was have them. Uh, Center Town, we live out toward that way. Uh, they were having them. MacMinville has a huge one every year. And uh, then just everybody that lived around us, it seems like they were having their own fireworks. Problem with that is in the town of Woodbury, they're not, you're not supposed you're to not be shooting supposed them off. To, they do. But they did. But yeah, and they uh, did. right before <laughs> 9 o'clock, here comes fireworks from the background. These horses were lining up, and you could tell they were getting spooked. Oh, and yeah. I saw Shane Gannon, who was kind of the ringleader, the ringmaster this year. He's on his phone, and I looked over, and I said, I'll bet he's calling the Woodbury police. A little bit later, I get home and uh, get through looking at some various things on Facebook and social media, and a girl had gotten a ticket. And I, I forget the dollar amount. It was huge. She said, I made a 150 to $200 mistake. And I don't know if she was the one that was shooting them off behind us because that's where this big loud booms that were spooking the horses coming from. But it may have been her. And, and uh, yeah, so she has to go to court. <laughs> Whoever this was has to, has to go to court and answer to that. But, yeah, that's uh, something you people might, uh, Woodbury residents might want to keep in mind. We put it out there, but not a lot of people They always pay have. Attention. But, see, we, in the last few years, we haven't had the fireworks and the horse show on the same night. Right. The last time this happened so. was 2016. And if you remember, the Woodbury, town of Woodbury fireworks show uh, was moved up a night to the night before. So, but they said that, you know, they got with the officials and of course, Shane being both as the town of Woodbury and, and in the Lions Club, he said, oh, we'll just take a break. Nine o'clock, we should be okay. Shane does a good job yeah. and he knows, you know, well, everybody out there knows that horses and fireworks don't mix. Right. And it's not the sight that the horses get excited about. It's the noise. Yes, the sound, the loud <laughs> the sound. booms. <laughs> and some of them can get pretty loud yes, for being do. amateur fireworks. <laughs> I, Let's shake your house. You're sitting out there thinking <laughs> a cannon has been shot or something. But, uh, but anyway, we did have those events, and hopefully um, nothing will spike due to these. But you won't know that for a couple of weeks, probably. Right. right. But people uh, just will not distance. Right. Just like for the fireworks, I'm sure they were all in a pile. I'm sure. Shoulder yeah. Shoulder to yeah, shoulder. Yeah, I'm there. sure they were. I didn't see down there. We didn't go down there. I wasn't. I didn't want to fight the traffic. Well, a lot of them <laughs> went. A lot of them went behind the bank. Right. Right. Because yeah. Because they let them off right there in that circle, that cul-de-sac, where you go into the dump. Right. I think that's where they were going to Yeah, that's where they were going to hit them up this year. And so before, we always sat at the courthouse and seen them fine. Yeah. You know, but I don't know what happened this year. So. Far further away probably was, uh, was, a key. was a key. But I'm sure you had a whole herd down there. <laughs> But I expect next year you'll see a whole totally different show, and it'll be a lot louder. Listen, we've had a good show. <laughs> yeah. We've had a good show up until, and I'm sure it was probably a good show. It was just depended on where you were. Right, right. You know. Yeah, what I, I could see of it when I drove down, and what I could see of it, it was nice. Yeah, yeah. it was real good. But uh, once again, you're just anticipating next year, thinking, well, if he gets his power license, watch out. Well, listen, I think we're going to have to uh, wait till next year for a lot of things. Yeah. We're talking about the Senior Center uh, moving their uh, event until next year anyway. When this first came out, a lot of musicians, of course, concerts have been on the decline and, and, and have been closed up and stuff preempted. Well, when they and the music when industry they stopped Bonnaroo. <laughs> yeah. Well, the music industry itself came out with a statement saying that they didn't foresee any concerts until the summer right. of 2021. And of course, the music, all these you know artists, country music, rock artists, they're like, no, no, don't say that, don't. Uh, well, you know the bars in Nashville that have bands there every night and everything. This is hurting them, and I know that's their business. But, you know, I have always had this feeling of how can you consider a bar an essential business 
or a liquor store, but churches were closed yeah. for a long time. Now, the way the governor has stated that churches can still have services, but they still want them to distance. I was thinking one distancing. state, where is it California, they won't let them sing in church? I think I've seen well, that they, somewhere. <laughs> they did say that anything like that, that you spread it, it is airborne. Right. And they do want you to wear a mask. And I tell you what, everybody gets so tore up about that because everybody has different feelings. And when I see these comments about, well, you're, against, you're going against my rights and the Constitution and everything, I thought, come on, if the least you have to do during this is wear a mask, it's better than being on a ventilator. Right. You know, and that could very well happen. I watched the news this week and I seen all of them partying down there on the beach. Not in Miami, but in Panama and all of them and everywhere else. And I thought, oh my gosh, y'all aren't bulletproof. Yeah. You know, you can bring this back and give it to no telling who. Yeah, and that's probably what they'll do. Well, so. <laughs> I, I would hate that, but Yikes, you're right. But yeah. It is spread yeah. that way. Yeah, it is. And then the planes going back, of course, they've had a bad year, too, to where you can sit in the middle seats and everything, packing them on there. Of course, I don't like to fly anyway, so I don't have that worry, but a lot of people do. Well, I guess if there's any, you know, gold at the end of the rainbow, there's going to be a lot of people with uh, antibodies, developing antibodies for this. You know, it's kind of like I said, I think I had it back before March. You may have I think because had it, it was because around before then. January, last week of January, I was sicker than a dog, and I missed about, what, two basketball games that particular time frame. Oh, do that, tell. Yeah, well, one of them was in your one of them was at Jamestown. We can't ever get signal up there anyway, so it didn't matter. But uh, but yeah, I felt you know when the symptoms came out and they said the symptoms, I'm thinking I had that, I had that, I had that. Okay, maybe because I was I, that was the worst I've ever felt. Period. And I haven't. I don't get the flu. You know, I don't take a flu shot. Not saying that you shouldn't, but I don't take a flu shot. Never had a problem with the flu. But this, boy, I tell you what, it whipped me for about seven days. And then the other seven days, I was in kind of a, you know, a recuperation mode. Well, I but, think it's the they don't know factor right. about this that's There's scary. a lot that they don't because know. Because they don't know. They don't know if you're going to be able to catch it more than once. They don't know if it's going to have any other effects, even if you get it and you get to stay home or come home or you're not on a ventilator. They don't know if somehow this will affect other parts of the body. You know, they just don't know. So we're all going to have to, we're all a part of it, whether we like it or not. Well, we're we said back in to. March, you know, we didn't want this to be the new normal. We heard the new normal, you know, and we're thinking, no, nah, this can't be the new normal. Well, it looks like it's going to well, be. Well, it's going to be for a while. And you're going to have to adjust to those masks, and, you know, you're going to have to, treat it and kind of follow what the other countries that have this problem you know china's like got the I'm problem saying, and you see was, everybody with masks running around there so. were so many people that thought this was some kind of a conspiracy well good grief what kind of a conspiracy can you have that's worldwide you can't get five people to agree on anything how are you going to get the whole world to agree on something and for those of you watching that believe this is a conspiracy, <laughs> letters to the editor over here. <laughs> it's okay, address. you're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> and that's mine, and I think it ought to be yours, but it doesn't always work that way. You know, um, you were talking about the guidelines from the governor, and of course, if you have a health department, they can make their own guidelines about wearing a mask and everything. Right now, Cannon County is low. Right. Uh, the ones that we know about are low. I don't know how much testing's been done, and I do know that some of the tests were false positives. You know, they right. weren't. It said they were positive, but they weren't. Right. One of them was pertaining to our nursing home, which, thank God, they didn't, that didn't uh, happen. 
Right. They were false readings, you know. So and they were very proud of them not having any positive tests at all. That right. they bragged about that, and they loved that statistic. And when these fourteen came out and said, "Hey, we tested positive," they were they were kind of concerned. Well, but then know, after about two weeks, all the employees came back and said, "Hey, look, we haven't." We haven't had any symptoms. Yeah. We haven't been nauseated. We haven't been, our throats haven't, you know, closed up or anything. Or What's going on? Fever. And so their corporate office turned around and said, hey, retest these people. And so they did. They retested them. They, re they, they retested the tests. Let's go that route. And they came back and said false positives. And the state says, well, we don't give that many. We don't, we don't have that many false positives. And I said, well, you got 14 and one sitting right here and when i heard those numbers i thought something doesn't sound right here you're not going to have 14 people in one facility that's asymptomatic you know you're not that one of them might have been a false positive a carrier but you're not going to have that many right and it's it's deadly to our people in the nursing, the nursing homes. homes right sure you is. know it is very few of them survive but uh, it was negative, and as far as I know, they haven't had any problems with no, it up as there. As far whatsoever. as I know, they haven't either. And uh, what did, did we're up to 36, no, 37 as of today, 37 positive here in Canyon County. Of course, the governor says that he's mandated or let the uh, governor or the uh, county mayors of each county decide whether or not to make mask a requirement. I would expect it in at least one of our neighboring counties, Rutherford, because they are the fourth, they have the fourth uh, statistics largest, largest right. rate right now. Uh, in you the know, state. if your county is fortunate to have a health department, they can also override what the governor has sent down. They can yeah. make it mandatory to wear, mandatory to wear a mask or not. And also your city and county mayors right but today on the news they said that they didn't like that that group because a lot of times the city and the county mayors can't agree right and that's rutherford too rutherford county cannot agree but you know they've got i, I don't see murfreesboro's mayor saying hey you got to wear a mask i do see rutherford county's mayor saying it but the once thing again, that I, I find that would be difficult with that is enforcing it. Right, yeah. You know, now it is mandatory in, in Davidson County. So if you leave here and go down there, you better take a mask with you. Right. But then again, I seen on the news people walking, you know, down broad and everything, and they didn't have a, a mask on. So how do you enforce that? Well, I think you, your police You're presence. You're supposed to find them. Yeah. Find but you them. don't have enough room to put them in jail. And you don't want to. <coughs> you don't want to. Uh, you don't want to meet them in court because that's going to over. You know, it's going to overflow court, and. Uh, so it's one of those things that's very hard to enforce. Kind of like texting while driving <coughs> type thing, you know, or wearing You're your right. seatbelt while you drive. But driving. I see people doing that all the time. Yeah. yeah. I still see people with their phone in their hand or they're looking down doing and you know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. But it's hard to it is. It's, it's hard, hard to hard determine to what you're that. doing. Yeah. yeah. Of course if you have a wreck and you got your cell phone in your hand, they're gonna kinda know probably. <laughs> if I had a wreck and I had my cell phone I get rid of my cell phone. <laughs> Obviously the cops are gonna sit out there Throw when it they out come. The window. They're they're gonna come and they're gonna look at your cell phone and no, say, okay. I see people right. we we have to go to Nashville to Vanderbilt quite a bit now. And I see people doing that all the time. And they and they aren't paying attention. And you're on the interstate and everybody's driving every which way. Semis are driving in the wrong lane. They shouldn't be over here in this lane. You know, that's just wrecks waiting to happen. Can I ask why semis don't? They're only supposed to stay in those suits. They're not supposed to come over in the fast lane and everything. Only to pass and then they're supposed oh, well, to go yeah, back. Yeah, that's what everybody, you're, that's right. Yeah, there is a law like that. But a lot of them get out there and... Well. 
you know. And once again, and there's a lot of once again, that's not enforced either, you know. Unless you're in the HOV lane during HOV times. I don't and see how they you got a crash test dummy in I your, don't, in your uh, passenger seat. I don't see seat. how they can stop anybody on the interstate. They do. I, well, I don't but, yeah. see how. And the rest of us have to rubberneck and slow traffic up just to watch them. Say, I don't see how they do because it's just how do you pick bumper a person? to bumper and everybody's yeah. going every which way. Yeah. <laughs> but they do. I hate going to Nashville. I'm getting old because it never used to bother me. I never wanted to live down there, but it never used to it's bother me. It's always bothered drive me going it. to Nashville. I used to work in Nashville, so uh, bumper well, to bumper traffic. Well, I have traffic, family yeah. members that do too. And you have to leave two hours ahead of time just to get to Nashville to get up to work on time. Of course, you know? my grandson, uh, he works for a company that he can work at home. Uh, so that's really good because yeah. he had to go right in down there on West End every day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> Not only do you go in, but coming home <laughs> off of West End is it's worse than going in. Yeah. It's worse, yeah. yeah. It is. Okay, we're getting away from what we, we, we do have um, the senior center, I mean the art center is having their senior conservatory. They had their junior one the last two weeks, that went well. They did a great job of wearing masks. They did a great job of grouping the kids where they were six feet apart and in small groups. Now, I will say the governor's guidelines did say groups of 50. Right. You know, he didn't want you to exceed anything that had more than 50 people. Well, we got a couple of family reunions coming up in Cannon County that I know there's more than 50 people in those families, you know. but. That's a risk they take, but that was in his guidelines. Yeah. And so this week and next week, the Art Center is having <clears throat> their um, senior conservatory, which is their seventh through twelfth grade, I believe. And they are booked. They have a full. They have full classes, but they're the same way. They're being put in different groups and different rooms. Right. So it's all working out well. But as far as for their plays or concerts, I don't think they have any concerts planned. Um, they did have one play, it was Wait Until Dark, and that was scheduled for August 14th through the 29th. And I would certainly check on that if I had season tickets or something because I don't know that that will be, they'll be able to do that because just like in their um, their stage area, it would be hard to social distance yeah. people that came to that if they had very many, you yeah. know. So check on that. You can always call. And of course, they have another big event that comes up in September. Uh, the week before the car show, really, and that is the White Oaks Craft Show. That brings in people from other states to that, that come to that. And um, I'd say I'd check on that, too, because they don't know where to go with that right. at this point. And it's the same way with the cruise ends. We have another one scheduled for the end of July. Um, I would check with the chamber before I went on with that because that falls right in. And you never know how many you're going to get on the cruise end. You right. don't know if you're going to get 50 or below or above or what. You just don't know. Yeah, we were kind of surprised we got 44. I was. I really didn't expect that many. Like I did Two didn't. weekends ago. Yeah. yeah. It was a good one. Too. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Had yeah, fun. we had some new cars. And the lady that got the Cruiser of the Month Award, uh, which was sponsored by Moonlight Drive-In, um, she she had a beautiful 36 Plymouth. I just yes, loved that old car. It was really pretty. Her name was Carolyn Roberts. And, um, of course, uh, DTC has jumped back in um, 
especially for the cruise-ins for July and August, but that was before the governor sent out his guidelines. So uh, we're still guidelines. in danger so, of not being able to get any T-shirts this year. So I always get T-shirts from DTC. That's the only one. I'm wearing this one right now, but usually I wear my DTC shirts. Yeah. I got like one for every day of the week almost. Well, they'll probably send you one since Cameraman's over here. It's not phasing <laughs> him. Thank you for promoting DTC. I'll tell you what I'll even do. Hey, did Fast Pace, are they a member of the chamber? Yes, they I, are. I thought they were. So let's, let's go this route. For anybody, I, I collect T-shirts, for those of you that don't know. Anybody that's a member of the chamber, if you would like to donate me a T-shirt to wear <laughs> on a future show, I will do so. And if we get too many, I'll change like every 10 minutes. We can do that. Well, you'll make this show an hour and a half, Keith. We're not going to do that. <laughs> every 10 minutes, that's 10, what, six T-shirts, if I did that. Six businesses. I don't care. Do you have T-shirts? You don't have T-shirts at the senior center, do you? You need to get some made up. Uh, yeah. Tell your board. Keith said, "Make some up. He'll wear one at the. He'll wear one at the DTC." T I don't really know if Deborah needs that much promotion. Especially the if they're closed. Center. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, maybe you can make them up for a good old days. That's yeah. Good old DJ. There, there we go. <laughs> Of course, if they don't, well, you, hey, I could wear one until next year and I'd promote next year. There we go. See? I, come I up have with a ideas. bunch of old t-shirts. I'm going to bring you some oh, of them great. I've never worn. Okay, you've all heard now. I, I take them to the courier if you want to donate any. Yeah, take them to the courier. That's right. we got to tell them <laughs> where to take them. They just don't want to dump them off on the curbside or anything. No. <laughs> All right, let's see. I've already talked about the cruise in. I haven't actually canceled it yet, but I would certainly call the chamber uh, ahead of time before I came, because I have a feeling I'm going to have to. I just don't want to take that chance. And I really don't know. DTC has been very particular about their employees. Right and being in crowds and any more than they have to and everything. So they may have a problem with that since the governor sent out that new order. Yeah, yeah. And the car show, there hasn't been. I'm going to let my board make the decision on that. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to let you all make the decision on that. I'm going to do like the governor. I'm going to send it. Pass it on down. <laughs> Pass it. Yeah. Pass the book. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, uh, have you got any other events? Now, we did have some information. You were talking about that. And one thing that I had uh, information on that surprised me, one of them was our uh, unemployment rates. And in May of 2020, uh, the unemployment rate. Now, this comes from the Upper Cumberland Development District, was 12.2 percent in Cannon County. But in April 2020, it was 15.9 percent. And in March, when the COVID really affected things, started affecting things, I'm wanting to say it was over 20 percent. Well, in five of in May of nineteen, right, uh, it was two point eight. Yeah, just that shows you how year. COVID nineteen is really has affected it. Affected but what it. I didn't understand was the unemployment rate was higher in April than it was in May. Because most people are going back to work now. A lot of a lot of your factories that were pushing people off, uh, you know, laying people off and whatnot in March and April. They opened back up in May. You know, the, everybody thought that the state was going to open up back in May, May 31st. We're going to open everything back up. That's what the scheduled date was. If you remember back in the first part of May when the governor came out and said, hey, look, uh, we're opening gyms and whatnot, but we're uh, keeping the barbershops closed. 
All of a sudden, all these barbershops started raising cane and all the spokespeople for the barbershops. Next week, here comes the governor says, okay, well, guess what? We're going to open them up. And if, if I'm not mistaken, they opened them back up on May 6th. But here's the guidelines. You've got to, it's by appointment only. you got to wear a mask, do all this stuff, but we'll let you open back up. He wasn't going to let the haircut salons, and I still haven't got one, but he wasn't going to let the haircut salons and stuff open up until the end of May. And that's when he was going to put phase three in the play where, you know, now you've got instead of 50 people gathering, you can have crowds of 100 or more. And these concert people started getting a little bit, hey, OK, maybe we're chugging along, getting ready to be able to open up the bigger venues. But that, of course, didn't happen because. Well, I think that it did somewhat happen. And that's one reason we're back. We've yeah. never got out of phase two. Yeah, and if you watch your June, your June unemployment rate is going to be lower than your May. It's going to be lower than your May. Well, one thing you've got to remember, though, too, is people that were drawing unemployment, if you were lucky enough to file for it and get it, uh, you got an extra $600 a week right? over what your regular unemployment would have been. Now, that goes, that went out, what, July 29th? Is it 29th? Or it's yeah, the 29th. It's coming I think close, that yeah. ends. It's coming close. And so, um, you unless they pass another stimulus package, you won't be getting that extra six hundred dollars. Yeah. That will make a big difference for July. Yeah. Not that you'll still, but a lot of people chose not to go back to work because of that. Right, right. I mean, they really, they kinda did. Kind of went into hiding. Oh, we're in vacation. No, in, I'm uh, doing better than Gatlinburg right now. <laughs> Thanks to this extra $600 a week we're getting, so we'll just stick around here. The other thing that I thought was interesting was our local sales tax numbers. Those surprised me because in Cannon County, uh, the last month I have is May of 2020. And our sales tax was uh, $155,810. And in the same uh, month in the prior year, in 2019, it was 109146 And you know what that attributes to, don't you? People shopping at home. People shopping at home, right. Your restaurants and your grocery stores stayed, were allowed to stay open. They were considered essential. Well, now, some of our restaurants weren't they, open. That's true. They weren't. But uh, for the most part, the restaurants were allowed. The ones that did well were Sonic and Hardee's and McDonald's, your drive through restaurants. Right. And some of your restaurants, your regular restaurants, had drive through also. Curbside service, yes. But as far as for eating, they didn't. But I do think... Our grocery stores did great. Yes, because they kept in stock and toilet paper. That was the big thing. If you could keep in stock and toilet paper, you're doing business, and that's what. Kleenex. I went in um, the dollar market. Uh, I guess it was in right after all that thing about everybody was wiping out the toilet paper. That Well, I didn't mean it like that, but they no were buying intended. the toilet gotcha. paper. <laughs> We know what you mean. Anyway, you know, whenever I would go in there, the girls that were stocking the shelves, they were just putting that toilet paper up there, and shelves were empty. And I says, y'all are fighting a losing battle there. And she said, this is the third time today that they had stocked the shelves. I bet come Halloween, we don't see a bunch of toilet paper <laughs> in people's trees or anything. Well, I want to tell you something. I've got some I'll donate because I bought some that was on sale somewhere and that was the sorriest toilet paper I ever had in my life. It's awful. And I've got 12 rolls of it. So was it one ply or two ply? That's oh, probably it what wasn't we're even about. one ply. It was, you could see through it. Organic, <laughs> organically certified one ply toilet paper. Okay, we're about to run out of time, so toilet papers back on the shelves. I haven't had any trouble getting no, toilet I haven't paper. Either. Not that I've needed it, but I mean, no. But anyway. Well, I don't want to ask what you use as an alternative. I had plenty, things. thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I went and hoarded it when it first came out or anything, but I bought a a big roll of it before <laughs> the, it, all the rest of it, all the zombies got to it. I thought, 
I'm not even going to go yeah, over with no, you, Keith. No. All right. We're running out of time. Okay. We will see you next month. And a good show. We want everybody to be safe. Even if you don't agree with me, I still want you to be safe. And we will see you next month.